In my previous video, I established a way to measure the weight of various objects in Tears of the Kingdom, and in this video, we're going to use those measurements to calculate the amount of energy in Link's portable battery pack. How are we going to go about this? Well, by using the formula for potential energy, we can find how much energy in joules is exerted by a device to lift itself up by a certain height. So let's start by figuring out what variables we need to solve for potential energy. In order to calculate potential energy, we need to know three things. We need to know the mass of our object, the acceleration due to gravity of our system, and we need to know the height of which the object is being lifted into the air. So, let's start by finding mass. The interesting thing about mass is that we already know it. In my previous video, I established a system of weight for Tears of the Kingdom, but I wasn't measuring weight at all. I was measuring mass. What do I mean? Mass and weight are two different things. Weight is the measurement of how much force you are exerting downwards due to the gravitational pull of a body. Mass is the measure of how much matter is in an object. So I can weigh a different amount on the moon than I do on Earth because the moon has a lower gravitational pull. But my mass is going to remain the same whether I'm on Earth or I'm on the moon or I'm on Jupiter because mass doesn't fluctuate with gravity. So what does this mean for Tears of the Kingdom? If you notice by the blue particles, I'm in a low gravity area. Specifically on Maya CR Shrine on the Starview Island in the North Gerudo Sky Archipelago. I chose this location because it's enclosed, there's no wind, there's nothing to mess with our system here. And you'll notice that even though the gravity has changed, our measurement of FE still remains constant. One battery still weighs 0.5 FE, Link still weighs 1 FE, everything is still the same. So, we now know that Fe is independent of gravitational pull, meaning that Fe is a measurement of mass. I also just realized that this means that I lied in my last video, since Fe is not a measurement of force, it can't apply to the efficiency calculation in our lever. So we'll go over some recalculations at the end of the video to sort of clear that up. Awesome, so now we know our mass, it's time to figure out our height. Our height is pretty easy to figure out. By making a contraption with a stabilizer, a bunch of batteries, and a lot of carts, we can make sort of a rudimentary measuring stick that measures in terms of cart lengths. So if we want to figure out how high our thing goes for three carts, we know it's three carts. And this actually lines up with the unit of measurement established in the previous video when we were talking about our lever lengths in carts. Awesome. So now that we know our height, we just have to find our acceleration due to gravity. To do this, we have to go to the second equation of motion. S equals ut plus one half a times t squared, where s is the distance traveled by the object in motion, u is the initial velocity of the object, a is the acceleration of the object, and t is the amount of time it takes for that object to travel. So, how does this relate to our acceleration due to gravity? Well, we can rewrite this as h equals 1 half g times t squared. Now, what does this mean? Well, h is our initial height of the object, which is how far it's going to fall to the ground. G is our acceleration due to gravity. And T is the time it takes to fall. Time it takes from our object to fall from our initial height. We can visualize this. If we draw a sick graphic here, here's our apple at our initial height and our apple is going to fall to the ground and it's going to fall to the ground because it's going to accelerate due to gravity so if we have our height and we have our time it takes for it to fall we can find our acceleration due to gravity so we're going to go ahead and start by taking our apple up to a measurement of three carts now here's the tricky part we're going to have to count how many frames it takes from the apple to fall from three carts 
down to the ground. So, now we have our height and our time it takes to fall. We go ahead and define those real quick. Our height is 3C and our time is 29 frames. But we don't want our time in frames, we want our time in seconds. So, if Cheers the Kingdom runs at 30 frames per second and it took 29 frames for our apple to fall, then we just have to divide 29 by 30 in order to get our time. And 29 divided by 30 is 0 0.966 repeating, we'll just say 0 0.9667 for rounding sake. So, now if we just write our finish time down here, it's 0 0.9667 seconds. Now all we have to do is plug that into this equation. So, 3c equals 1 half g times 0 0.9667 squared. Or actually, 0 0.9667. Now, all that. All that should be squared. Okay, so we can actually rewrite this as this other side over here as g times 1 half times 0 0.9667 squared. Now if we simplify this, 0 0.9667 squared is 0 0.9344, I'll write this down, is 0 0.9344444, repeating infinitely. And now that halved is going to be 0 0.467222, repeating. Now, all we have to do to get g by itself is divide 3c by that value. So 3c divided by 0 0.467.22222 is 6.42 carts per second squared. Now, obviously 6.42 isn't the exact number, it's a lot more decimal places than that, but that's a pretty good rounding of the number. And our unit is carts per second squared, because we have carts on the top, carts divided by second squared, which is what this is in, I should have specified units per second squared, because uh, it's dividing by second squared, and we have second squared and not just seconds because we squared this value right here, so that means our unit has to square by, yeah, I can't add units now, but it's, our units are seconds squared. So now we figured out all of the infinity variables, so it's time to apply what we've learned to figure out our potential energy. To do this, we're going to be using a fan and a stabilizer contraption. So, the FE of our little fan and stabilizer contraption is going to be our mass. So our mass is going to be 3.35 FE plus 3.35 FE, since both the fan and the stabilizer weigh 3.35 FE respectively, and that's just going to be 6.7 FE. Our acceleration due to gravity, that's a constant, we already figured that out, that's going to be 6.42 carts per second squared. And our height, we're going to be using that same cart stack as before. So our height is going to be 3 carts. So now that we have all of our variables, we should be able to calculate our potential energy. So potential energy is going to be equal to 6.7 Fe times 6.42 carts per second squared times 3C. And that is going to come out to 129.042 joules of energy.
Now how do we do this to find the energy of Link's battery? Well, if we know that the fan stabilizer contraption takes 129 joules to go three carts, then we can just simply see how much battery it takes for that contraption to travel three carts. Timing starts the first frame that the battery indicator is on screen and ends the first frame that the bottom edge of the fan is in alignment with the top edge of the third cart. So I went ahead and counted out the length in pixels of one full segment of battery, and that comes out to 26 pixels. Now, when the fan hit the bottom edge of the third cart, there were 12 pixels of battery left, meaning that the fan used 14 pixels of battery. Alright, it's time for our last couple calculations. First, we're going to find the percentage of battery that is used by the fan when it expends 129.042 joules. So, if you take those 14 pixels from earlier, 14 pixels from earlier, and divide it by 26 pixels, we get 0 0.538, or 53.8% of the battery. So, if we know that 129 0.042 joules is equal to 53.8% of the battery, then we can use that as a conversion factor and say, okay, 100% of our battery, that is 100% over 1 times 129.042 joules, oops, 0.042 joules, divided by 53.8%. And when we do that out, we get 239.649 joules of energy. So, if Link has 16 full batteries that he can use, just keep in mind a dark blue battery counts as two, then we multiply that by 16, and we find that a maxed out battery contains 3,834.39 joules of energy. Which is kind of underwhelming, but it makes sense when you realize that Link weighs 10 apples and two fans can carry him across the entirety of Hyrule. So that's it. Although I guess I did promise to rectify my lever calculations, so... We have a lever with a 3 cart long arm, 1 FE on both sides, 1 FE needs to be converted to weight, so we multiply it by 6.42 to get a weight of 6.42 nameless units. Now that we did that, it's basically the same as before. 6.42 over itself, boom, AMA. 1.5 over itself, boom, IMA. 1 over 1 times 100, boom, efficiency. That's it. See ya.